Hello, my name is Mariana Meirelles. I am a scientific software engineer working at Quantstock, and I'm the creator of iPyCytoscape. Um, in this talk, we're going to learn more about interactive graph visualization and how to apply it to your Jupyter ecosystem. So first, an overview. Uh, we'll start with an introduction of the current ecosystem, and we're going to move on to what iPyCytoscape brings, um, how to install it, how this works, um, some resources, and how to contribute to the project. So an introduction about the ecosystem. Um, talking about Jupyter, the Jupyter ecosystem, uh, it's not easy to find many tools to do network visualization. Um, I'm going to briefly talk about the two most, most used ones. Um, the first one is Network X. Uh, which is a great tool to operate algorithm analysis over, over graphs, but it's not such a great tool when it comes uh, about um, visualizing your graph. Um, the networks generated by Matplotlib are mostly static and they're hard to interact with. Uh, in the Network X docs, uh, it's recommended to use a dedicated graph visualization tool um, since uh, in their opinion, um, Matplotlib is not um, it's not doing an excellent job in that regard. Um, another option is VisJS, um, but in this case, it's converted to Python. Um, it's also an interactive visualization. Besides the network X, um, we also have this, which is um, an interactive um, graph visualization tool, meaning that you can um, move nodes and edges with ease and uh, have some more fine-grained interaction with your graph. Um, but this um, has some problems. It's not so easy to integrate with Jupyter widgets. And I felt like it was hard to customize your graph with different layouts and integrate with JavaScript events. Um, so what does iPyCytoscript brings to this, to the ecosystem? What is its point? Um, first of all, iPyCytoscape is also interactive. So that means you can visualize your chains immediately. You can um, tweak positions of nodes and edges. And um, yeah, I can show an example. So here we're just loading data and operating the graph. I'm going to talk more about this later. Um, so we have this graph. I can move nodes around. And I can also add new nodes to it, like this one. Pretty simple uh, example, but simple feature. Um, another advantage of iPyCytoscape is uh, its full communication between the front and the back end. So um, iPyCytoscape is able to react to user interaction in the kernel uh, using both the tools that JavaScript and Python has to offer to listen to events and to respond to them. Uh, so here is another example. I'm genera generating a, a cytoscape graph. And what I want to do here is um, I want to, every time I click, I click a node, uh, I want to, in the front end, I want to get this event of node click and um, Grab the the information about that node from the back end and show it on the on the on the front end. So I'm doing this this piece of code, and I have my graph. I can interact with my nodes. Nothing is happening because I'm just grabbing around, pushing them around. But if I click a node, then I will receive the information about that node. And if I click a different one also get more information about it 
and so on. So all of this is possible because IPySetoscape uses Spectate, which is a library that um, makes it possible to monitor changes in containers like dictionaries and lists um, directly without needing the without the need of creating deep copies on the on the backend side of, of a whole container. Um, and this might mean a huge improvement on performance for people who are creating um, big graphs and dealing with big operations all the time. Um, another advantage of IPy Cytoscape is that it's fully compatible with IPy widgets. Uh, IPy widgets brings a wide vari variety of tools that can be super useful for tweaking around with graphs, uh, like sliders, uh, radio buttons, toggle buttons. Um, and it's possible to create really complex dashboards uh, with lots of interactions and improve your user's experience of your, of your environment with this. So let's look at more examples. Um, in this case, um, I decided I want to have um, all of my edges highlighted red and all of my nodes uh, on blue. Uh, and the way I'm doing this is um, I'm setting a new style to the graph, the graph that was previously blue. Now it doesn't have any style, it looks gray. Um, but every time I add this highlighted class, then um, one of my, my all of my edges will become red. And I'm creating a button that will do that. So when I click here, the all of the edges are highlighted red. And you can see I can do the same thing for nodes. Uh, I'm just adding this highlighted class that I created this style here before. And when I click here, all of my nodes are highlighted blue. Another example of how you can use IPy widgets on your project um, is this one. Here, I you just saw this change on the graph. I changed the node spacing from a uh, value that was the default to 100, and that's why they look like this. But now, what I want to do is I want to connect this attribute of the graph with this slider. So it's set to 100, but I want to make them closer. So it's just fully interactive and responsive at the same time. So how to get Epicet Escape? Epicet Escape is available on Pip, Mamba, and Conda, and you can get from this three places, but Mamba is the recommended uh, way to get it because it's, it's faster. Uh, if you're on JupyterLab, you have to add this line to your installation. And now I'm going to dive in into a bigger demo on explaining how does IPySet Escape work. So the first thing you need to do is to um, import type by Cytoscape and then instantiate an object. Here we're calling a Cytoscape widget and creating a Cy object JSON. Um, IPA Cytoscape can deal with three different kinds of data input. It can deal with Cytoscape JSONs, um, which is a specific kind of JSON that we're going to talk about later and get into the specifics of like the attributes and um, how you're supposed to use it. Um, IPSetoscape also is fully, fully compatible with Network X and with Pandas data frame. Um, so let's, hear, uh, let's see here first uh, how to, to add um, data from a Cytoscape JSON. So you just import JSON, and here, um, 
Cytoscape is able to handle with two kinds of JSONs, uh, one for the data, which actually contains uh, the information of your nodes and edges, uh, the information of your graph, and also style data. Some graphs might, might get really complicated with really specific connections between, between the, the edges, and you might have a really big um, style uh, chart, uh, style JSON. So um, you don't have to pollute your Jupyter Notebook. You can just put it on a, on a file and load it. Um, to, add gra uh, to add data to, to the Cytoscape object from, from the JSON, all you have to do is to call add graph from JSON, pass the data. Uh, same thing for style, we said style. And then you have a Cytoscape graph. Uh, with Network X, it's really similar. You import Network X, um, you create a new widget. Here I'm creating a network graph with the complete graph uh, method. Um, and then I'm passing this, this graph that I just created to, uh, to a network X uh, to method, a true, a true graph from network X. And this is the graph generated by network X fully interactive. Uh, of course, you can do this with any other uh, network X um, method. Here I'm setting a layout and an animation to false. And this is what I have. Um, yeah. So the next one, pandas data frames. Uh, you just import pandas the same way. Here I'm downloading this CSV from the internet. Here are the columns that it, it has. I'll explain this a little bit later. So the, the data frame method is a bit different from the other methods. Uh, the first argument is a data frame. In this case, I'm just passing the, the first 30, 30 rows of the data frame because this is a really big one. And um, the first argument is a group by argument. So I can choose uh, a column to group um, my data with and um, show it in the, in the graph. Here, I'm choosing counters. So we're going to see clusters of nodes, and uh, these clusters uh, are going to be different countries that that people are, uh, that the data has. Um, and here, uh, I, I use this method called set to tip source to name. So it means it will get the attributes that I'm passing here, and it's going to show as a two tip, just so we can have a better understanding of the of the visualization. So this is what I, I have. Um, each one of these clusters represent a country, and which in this case, each one of the nodes represent people. So if I click here, I have the age, the age and the, and the virus that each individual has. Um, yeah. So let's talk a little bit about uh, epicytoscape attributes. This is, um, is an example of a cytoscape JSON. Uh, a cytoscape JSON consists on nodes and edges. And um, uh, many of the, 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 the data that they have is shared by both. But I'm going to talk about the nodes first, and then uh, we can go to the specificities of the edges. So a node must have a data attribute. And inside this data attribute, it must have an ID. And this ID must, must be a string. So um, uh, all of the other attributes that are inside data, they're, they're not obligatory. Um, these, for example, represent the data uh, that are inside a node. So it's going to be different for you. You can customize this and add whatever it makes sense with your data. Um, nodes also have a position attribute, which uh, you can set a fixed position so it will appear on the screen once you you generate it on that specific position. Um, it also has uh, the group keyword. Uh, this keyword is not is not mandatory, 
But if you add it to your graph um, in the in the right spot, um, because this is a node, so so I have to write here that it's a, it's a group nodes. Um, if you're having problems with your with your application and you need to debug it, uh, if you add this attribute here, you're gonna get better uh, debug messages on the on DevTools. So it's a good practice to add this to your to your graphs. Um, so you, these the other attributes are mainly concerning about uh, the visualization of the graph. So and, and how you interact with it. So here you have uh, selected, if a node was selected, selectable to make it select or not, lock it, which means um, you won't be able to move it around in the screen, grab it, grabbable, painable, um, whether if the node is going to be painting or um, dragging. And you can also add classes to, to your node um, so you can interact with it more easily from the from the front end with JavaScript, if you if you're comfortable with this kind of thing. Uh, so for the edges, it's the same thing. You need a data attribute, and inside this data attribute, you need source and target. These are mandatory. They also need to be strings. These are the the IDs from the nodes, just like a normal graph would work. All of the other information is also not mandatory. You can add whatever you need. Um, there are some specific interactions like uh, weight, um, uh, ID also for your edge, um, but they're not mandatory. And they also have position. The same counts for group here. You will get better um, error messages, but you have to make sure that you're adding the right, the right um, group to your group. This is an edge, so it must be edges. And all of the other attributes are the same. So let's talk a little bit now about the network X interoperability. Um, here, I'm just just like to, sh to show that, of course, all of the, the normal methods that you can use in network X are still going to work. You can still make operations over your network X graph um, because all Cytoscape is doing here is uh, showing this graph. So you can have a graph, make operations over it, and still have a visualization. Um, here, uh, more regard regarding the, the, the part of, of um, the interactivity. Uh, here we have a graph, and I want to add the second graph to this graph. Uh, all you have to do is create your second graph. Here I'm creating just two nodes connected by an edge. And I'm, I'm adding this graph into this already existing one. And that's all you have to do. Um, until now, we only showed uh, undirected graphs. But Epicetoscape also support directed graphs. So you can have something like this uh, with the indication indication of uh, what's going on in your graph. And Epicetoscape also support uh, mix, mix, mixed graphs, um, which means you can have undirected and directed at the same time in the same, gra in the same graph. Uh, another interesting feature and, uh, with, with the interaction with Network X is that you can create a custom node to your Network X. Uh, all you have to do is like create a class for a node and inherit it from iPath Escape node. Um, add whatever attributes that you need, create and instantiate these nodes, create a, ne a Network X graph, add these nodes to the graph, here, I'm setting some style, um, adding this graph to network X, and you have your own personalized graph with your own characteristics for your nodes with their own style um, as you need. Uh, so besides that, now I'd like to show a little bit of the other things that iPaSetoscape offers you out of the box. 
So for example, we have this example of tree visualization, um, which gives you this kind of visualization. You don't, you don't really have to do anything. All you have to do is to set layout and uh, add the degree name to your layout. This data doesn't contain anything about hierarchy or it just, just uh, offers you a nice tree visualization. Uh, we also have circular visualizations um, and um, grid visualizations, if that fits your data. iPassetoscape also offers um, many different kinds of uh, labels and you can put it, put them um, in many different locations and also customize them just like these ones uh, are inside here with different colors and with an outside, an outline. So um, you're using iPassetoscape, what's there to help you? We have documentations. Um, we also have examples that you can look at. And we have a GitHub repository and uh, a Gitter channel in case you need to um, <laughs> so you were interested in using iPyCetoscape? What's out there to help you? We have documentations, we have examples, we have the GitHub repository in case you want to open issues or ask questions. And we also have a Gitter channel that you can use for synchronous communication. Um, all of the main, main developers are there. And yeah. So if you want to contribute, um, the iPyCytoscape uh, repository is under um, uh, a code of conduct that's not really, it's not written anywhere, but um, this community is a harassment free community. Um, we don't tolerate any kind of discrimination, either be because of gender, sexual orientation, um, disability, race, body size, or um, if you're a beginner or if you're experienced, uh, we don't accept any kind of harassment and discrimination in, in our communities. Uh, in the, in the Quantstock communities. And uh, if you're interested in contributing, um, writing code is not the only way of contributing. You can, something that really helps is opening issues on, on the GitHub repository. So you can have a history of what's going on, what are the problems, and maybe uh, 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 something online to other people, because if you face a problem, it's very likely that other people also face the same problem. Um, so it's, it's really helpful to, to have this, this documentation of the issues and how to solve them and the discussions online on our GitHub repository. Uh, you can help with documentation, uh, either writing documentation or adding a new uh, example to the docs that you, you, you discovered something new that wasn't there and I'm pretty sure that could help a lot of people too. You can, of course, also contribute to the code base um, you can answer questions either on the GitHub or the Gitter channel. You're super welcome to uh, take front if you know uh, what you're, well, if you face the similar problem, if you understand and you can answer somebody else's questions, you're welcome to do that. And also spreading the word. If you know anyone that might benefit from iPyCytoscape or is interested, um, just tell them about it, drop by. Thank you.